Yo, what up? Why for us? You already know who it is, man. It's Next Sound Vote. Um, let's jump straight into it. So the last video, we went over UI UX design and widgets, how to drag and drop and widget tree and how to design a little bit on the front end of Flutterflow. Now let's jump into one of the things that makes it a big deal. The ability to actually use a back end, a database. Um, so you can use Firebase or Superbase uh, with Flutterflow. Natively, Google Firebase works best with Flutterflow. Uh, because it's in a name, Flutter. Flutter uses a language called Dart, uh, which was created by Google, uh, which obviously works really, really good with Google products. And Firebase is a Google Cloud Platform product. Uh, it makes it easy to like run your database and large, large applications and a bunch of JSON files and have real time database things, storage, cloud functions, etc. cetera. Uh, very easy. And you need that to build an app. Uh, this right here, um, if you're not on this page, uh, you can get here uh, through connect. Connect is where you connect your database. So I already connected a database. Um, I can show you how to do that in another video. But within that, first thing we need to do is create what's called collections. Uh, this is how Firebase functions with collections. So you have a user collection. You might have a post collection. You might have a task collection. You might have videos collection. In that collection, you'll have more data um, associated with that collection. So let's let's start this out. So let's say users. Uh, I want that to be a main collection. Go ahead and do this. It looks like you're trying to create a user collection. Uh, would you like to uh, pre-populate it with default user fields? Let's say yes. And it's going to give you something that you're familiar with, right? So you get the email display name, which would be, that would be like your username, a photo URL, which would be your avatar, a user ID. So it knows uh, that's like a, it's a piece of information when somebody authenticates or signs up uh, for your app. It creates a user ID, which is like a, it's a way to identify that specific user throughout the app. So that's important. So if you start having the iOS version and the Android version and the web application version, you want to be able to recognize that same user, no matter if they switch phones, devices, or whatever it may be. When they sign in, we still know who it is. The created time, so when the user join, and the phone number, you're not limited to that. So we can add things. So say if we were building an Instagram, like uh, what does Instagram have on it? It has the amount of posts you have. So let's say post, uh, let's say post count. That's going to be an integer. So an integer is going to be a number uh, that we can utilize later. It's not a list. It's just one piece of data. So you press the green check mark right there. Let's say we have followers and following. All right. So uh, if I can spell followers count, let's make that an integer as well. And you have following count. It's also an integer. Cool. And then, you know, another way to look at that is if you wanted to make, this is just the number. So if you're following 3,000 people, you would use an integer. So that way you can actually get the number of how many followers or how many people you're following. But now, who is following? So now that we have a user's collection, this is all your information, but every user is going to have the same amount of information, the same touch points, all these same data points as well. So maybe we want to know who is following. So if we say uh, followers and then we would pick a document reference and that's going to be now users, like what users are following me or following you or another user. And this is going to be a list. So you may have a list of 500 followers. So it's going to be a list and it's going to put the user ID, this string of information. So that's basically what this is saying. Uh, document reference of users. That is a list of people that follow you. So you would want that. Uh, and then you would need the same thing for following. Who are you following? Which is going to be yet again, what a document reference of users. That is a list of people you follow. So with that being said, you would create an action and a button that has an action to follow someone or unfollow someone or add someone to a list or bookmark or save. That's what this would be used for. You can use that for different data types. Um, so say if we had posts, you can make a, a list of posts or save post and you would literally call it. We're not going to save this, but saved posts. And then that would be a different type. So that wouldn't be users. We would make another collection called post. And then we would actually reference that and it would be a list of saved things that we have. So. But this is something important. So once you create that, you have these Firestore rules. What we want to do is we want to change all of these first three to authenticate it. 
And then the last one, because we only want the person who owns that collection to delete their files. Because say, for example, one person deletes every user and every post on platform just because you didn't set your Firestore rules correctly. So the only person we want to be able to delete themselves and not every other user is a tagged user. And look what we're going to go after, the user ID. So that's that special string, the reference that we know only that person can delete their collection. Then we're going to deploy that. Um, so that's going to take its time. There we go. That's deployed. We're good. So those Firestore rules, all of this good stuff right here has been deployed automatically. Um, why is this important? Once that's set up, now we can go back to the app. So let's click here to go back to the widget tree or back to build. Um, but for those will bring you back to the screen. And what we want to do is select the username, right? So with here, you could do this. And now that you have an authenticated user, look where all that data is, right? Here. Email, user ID, display name, photo, right? Everything that we actually put back there, even our followers count, following count. Um, so let's add a uh, cover image, right? That's not on there. Uh, this would be that background image. So let's say cover image. This is going to be an image path. It is not a list because it's just one photo. Let's add that. So now when we go back here, we'll see that that's there. So when we click on this text, you click this, this is to add a dynamic variable. This is how you get the data from the back end of the app to the front end of the app and anything that you do on the front end of the app to the back end of the database on Firebase. This is how you actually make your app work. Um, so now that we're assuming we are the person authenticated, that's always talking about the person on the phone currently who has signed in you. Um, you're the authenticated user. Um, now we can add display name, right? So we were just selected. Now it just became dynamic. That simple. So if a user was to sign up and create a username and they type in the username YFRS, then that would actually show here as their display name when you actually test that. And that's how you get data to the front end of the app. So now if you have a million people signed up to your app and a million people have a million different names, now their names will actually show on their profile for the authenticated user. So let's say maybe this is user type. Let's go back to the database and add user type. A user type is a string because that's words. Um, so a good way to think about this, an integer is a number uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's just one big number. Um, later on, you can actually use like uh, different ways to view that as a decimal or as currency, etc. A double is going to be a decimal. A string is words. So or a, a string of information of words, nothing necessarily like only numbers or only text. It can be numbers and text and symbols. That's a string. A, a Boolean is true or false. So if this user is signed in, do this. If this user is not signed in, take them to the sign in page. Um, you have color. So if you were to use like background colors, you want them to change based on what somebody uploads or selects. Uh, image path, video path, audio path, document reference is what we said. That's a, any collection that you have that you put on the back end of the platform is gonna be a document. And the reference is gonna be the actual reference to that in particular document. Meaning if you have a thousand users, all 1000 users are in a collection of users, but they all have individual document references. Uh, you have date time for timestamps, uh, lat long, which is latitude and longitude for if you start using maps and want to build like an Airbnb type platform or a location platform or peer space type platform. Um, you have data types um, and then you have actual enums, which is basically saying an enum is a constant. It's something that you don't want to change throughout your app where you don't want accidents. For example, if you if you have a clothing store, you want uh, small, medium, large sizes. Um, if it's seasons, you want spring, summer, fall, winter. You never want those to change or give people the ability to spell that wrong, and that's what you would use that. So now that we have user type string, let's go ahead and lock that in. So now when we go to the front end, we'll click producer, variable. So you're gonna click that, the little two little orange lines right there, click that authenticated user and then for this data type here on the screen we want user type right here also if you don't see it right away you can actually just let's remove that you can click it again and you just type it in so if you remember what you named it you just type it in it's the quickest way to find it i use it all the time so now we have these items now we know the dynamic let's set the avatar too so this is the container over here in the widget tree right so we're going to click that it's highlighted in green so we know that's the right thing um, go to here, 
We're going to change this to network. Asset is if you're using something that's on the back end of the app. That's just, yet again, it's more like a constant. It's steady. It doesn't change. It's not uh, dynamic. Nobody has the ability to update it. You don't have the ability to use CRUD, which is create, read, update, and delete. You don't have the ability to do that when you do an asset. So you want to change it to network. And then now you have this ability to set the path. So we have an image path, which is going to be authenticated user and photo URL. That is going to be our avatar. Now you can see that the photo went away. You could set a default. So maybe it may be your logo, app logo or something. We're going to leave that empty for right now. And then we have this one. Remember, this one was the cover image on the background. Same thing. Uh, uh, let's pick the right one. So let's name that. All right. So this is the image. This is the overlay. So on the image, background image, change this to network variable, and then we're going to set it to cover image. Boom. So now if we were to test this app, obviously we did not create an authentication page, so it doesn't know that I'm signed in. Maybe we can do that in the next video after I explain all of this. Um, but if we create an authentication page, I sign in, create a user, upload my avatar, choose my username, upload my cover image. Now my information, my username, my user type, my cover image, my avatar will show here. This is the beginning of any social media platform you use from Instagram to Pinterest to TikTok, etc. Because it could have been a video that we actually uploaded. So this also makes Flutterflow huge game changer because you get the ability to use a back end and something that's cloud, big boy crap. Now we're getting into the Superbase, Postgres, back ends, Firebase uses JSON. That's the predominant difference between those two platforms. A Superbase is SQL based, you know, Firebase is JSON. But yeah, so as you can see, it's just that easy. You come back here, you make a collection. So let's try it again. Let's just make something else. Um, let's make another collection. Let's call it post. Now we got two different collections. Let's start from scratch. Let's do owner. Who made this post? Now we're going to do, how do we check? A docket reference. And we're going to check the reference of what type of collection? The user collection, right? So users, you see they're both there now in the actual uh, reference type, right? The drop down. So boom, that's the owner. And then the post is going to have a caption, right? That's going to be a string because it's text. Might have emojis. It might have, you know, uh, special characters, an at sign, whatever it may be in that. So you're going to have that. You're going to have timestamp, right? That's date time. This is when the actual post was created. We're going to have maybe views. Uh, that's going to be an integer. So how many times was it views, viewed, uh, likes, same thing, integer. How many times was it liked? Now you're starting to create an Instagram. You know, what else is on Instagram? Uh, saves, uh, save. Uh, yeah, we could do integer just to show how many people saved it. And then on the user's document, we would put my saves, right? And why would we do this? Because it's a list that only belongs to me that I can see. So what we need to do is create a document reference of post that is a list of my saves, All right? There you go, just that simple. So now when you actually make a post, you can make an action that literally allows you to add this post to your user list of my saves. And this is where like the database thing gets huge with Flutterflow. And this is endless. This is this can go on and on and on and on and on. Um, it won't stop. So so much more to cover just with this one subject. We could do like 50 videos just on Firebase backend or Superbase backend integration and how it ties into an app. But we're gonna stop right there just so you can get the basics of why this is great. We're barely scratching the surface right now with Flutterflow. Let's get to the next video and we'll talk about enums and matter of fact, let's talk about the enums right now so an enum is something that you don't want to change for example um enum name uh, sizes we, we talked about that before so boom and then you add a value small medium right large more importantly uh something that you may want to use enums for is let's make another one user roles, right? So maybe you have different user roles on the app where you have a creative, 
you know, I do music. And then, or oh, let's get rid of that. Let's say you have an admin. You know, they got God mode. And you have a curator. Right? Maybe there's buyer, seller. If you had two different type of users, right? If you wanted to create a, a fiber or a thumbtack or you have the person creating the job and then the person answering to the job. You have the person that's selling a service and you have the person buying the service. So you would want different things like that. These are enums. They're not variables. They're constants. They don't change. You use these because they're more reliable and can scale when you start getting a lot of users and eliminate room for error or just messing crap up. So now we'll end the video. That's back in database so far, just on Firebase and what you can do with Flutterflow. Barely scratching the surface. Make sure you stick around to the next video. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. Uh, go ahead and give your boy a subscribe so we can keep putting these videos out. Um, and you guys can keep following along. Man. I'll see you guys on the next video. You guys already know who it is. YFRS. Next time, vote. Peace. Yeah.